the Nonprofit Podcast, powered by DonorBox. Social media is a game changer. In the digital age where every post, tweet, and share counts, deciphering whether your social media efforts are moving the needle can be a daunting task. Welcome to the Nonprofit Podcast. I'm Kara. I'm a nonprofit leader and fundraiser, and I have the honor of serving as podcast correspondent for DonorBox. We're here each week with practical actions you can use today to increase donations and take your nonprofit to the next level tomorrow. Today's episode is your guide through that labyrinth of social media marketing for nonprofits. Kelly Ganyan is the creator of Nonprofit Marketing Nerd, and she helps nonprofit leaders, founders, and fundraisers level up their online marketing and storytelling. Kelly's here to share some of her insights on how to make social media marketing easier for your nonprofit. So Kelly, it's fantastic to have you with us. Yes, thank you so much for having me, Kara. I'm excited to dive in and nerd out. Oh, good. Well, let's do that together then. Let's talk through some ways to make social media marketing not just manageable or just one more thing to do, but truly impactful. So Kelly, there are so many types of social media campaigns for nonprofits. What are some that that nonprofits should consider? Yeah, Kara, I'd love to say, well, first you have a strategic plan that then informs your marketing plan that then informs your dial guide based on where you're going. And then you have a huge brand package, right? And then you decide what campaigns you're going to do and how you're showing on social media. But I've been there in-house at a nonprofit. I'm sure you have too, as many of the listeners have. And really, the best thing you can do is see where you at. Where do you want the social media to take you? Do you want more donors? Do you want more volunteers? Are you focusing on program participants? And then start to figure out what do those people want to hear, right? Who are you talking to and what do they want to hear? And that's how you'll decide what campaigns or what social media content you should have. One of the ways I see nonprofit really doing social media the wrong way is they focus a lot on what I would call trifled brochure content and then their events and then really major impact stories. But all of the other warm and fuzzy that really make a nonprofit organization that we as nonprofit employees, what keeps us going to work every day is never shared. And so one of the campaigns I always recommend nonprofits do is something that shows the reality and the behind the scenes and the warm and fuzzy. And so what that looks like for every organization is different, but I would focus on something that's warm and fuzzy. And if you are the person managing the social media, maybe set up a campaign that excites you. Yeah, I mean, that's a good perspective. We're not a stuffy nonprofit. We are really fun and engaging. So why not invite others into that story? That's so cool. Now, consistency. There's algorithms for every social media platform. And so I hear a lot about consistency and how important it is. But sometimes social media is just one more thing to do on top of all that's going on. Can you share some tips on how nonprofits can maintain a consistent presence on social media without burning out or overwhelming their audience? Kara, the first thing I can say is that I could go on about this for probably 20 hours. And I'm a big efficiency and effectiveness nerd. And consistency, really, those three things go hand in hand, especially when it comes to social media marketing. One of the best ways is to be proactive, not reactive with your social media marketing. And what that exactly looks like typically means using a content planner and scheduling out social media ahead of Nonprofits all the time are guilty of they have a lot going on and then they post a lot and then they do nothing for three weeks, right? Um, so one way using a content planner and scheduler will help you, maybe you have three big donations coming at once. Instead of posting three thank yous that day, go ahead and schedule it out over the next three weeks. You have consistent thank yous. One of the biggest pieces of advice, I, I always talk to executive directors that are also managing their social media that exactly what you said, They cannot find the time. They're wearing all the hats. They coulda, shoulda, woulda done this and that with their social media. And, you know, social media does have value. And if you buy that and believe that, you need to make it a priority. I recommend executive directors or whoever your social media manager is to block out enough time. And I say two hours a week is probably what you're looking at and treat it like a meeting. So that means you have a standing social media marketing meeting with yourself every Thursday from noon to two. Close your door. And that will make sure that consistency really happens. 
I'm a big fan of time blocking. Unfortunately, in my own efforts, social media falls to Friday afternoon for me. And then I'm just trying to push something out. I like the idea of scheduling it, blocking it out. Is there a certain day or time that you see that resonates really well for posting? So in terms of when to post, I recommend scheduling out posts. And I would love to say it's every nonprofit should be posting at 6 p.m. and 8 a.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But that's really depends on who is your target audience. And what do you want to see? If your target audience is someone that works nine to five and is looking at social media during work, and maybe you're on LinkedIn, then probably post during that time. If your target audience are maybe 30 to 45 year olds that are getting their kids to school and then at home in the evenings, maybe you're posting at 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. So that does depend. But the key is to get to them, you're scheduling that content out ahead. of time. Okay, um, so you do the work on Thursday but perhaps it's scheduled to release that next Tuesday. So you're working days ahead. Okay. Exactly. Yes. Uh, one of the other recommendations I have, and every nonprofit deals with that, where they don't have the pictures, right? They have the idea, and then they're like, oh, now I need to go out and get that picture. And that becomes very time intensive. If you have an idea, I need to go out and get that. And so I do recommend at least once every quarter to go do a mini photo shoot of your organization. Just batch get, they don't, it can be with your smartphone, batch get as many pictures as possible all at once. And I'm talking like, you know, 300 plus pictures of people, of things, of volunteers, of staff, of silly things you think you'll never need, of your clients, if that is allowable at your organization. And then you have those images to pull from. And that usually will get organizations, if you're scheduling one post that has images a week, that will usually get organizations entire, you know, three months worth of content out of that one photo shoot. Oh, brilliant. That's a great use of time. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. I'm going to do that this week. Uh, you talked briefly about your audience and knowing who your audience is. How can nonprofit leaders really define their target audience and then further tailor that content? This is really where nonprofits often go wrong is they never know who, like even the question of how, right? I think a lot of nonprofits that are listening are probably like, oh, I'm supposed to be like defining a target audience. It, it really is important. And one of the key ways nonprofits go wrong is they try to say everything to everyone and then no one hears anything. So again, that does go back to what are you trying to do with your social media? So if you're trying to recruit more volunteers, then who are your current volunteers? Who are your potential volunteers? And your social media content should be something that those people would want to hear in a coffee chat, something they would want to hear. If your goal is to get more donors through social media, then your content should probably be reflective of that. And you would be looking then at who are your current donors, who are potential donors, and providing content that they would find interesting, attractive, relatable. That's really helpful. You know, Kelly, I have followed you on LinkedIn for quite some time. I know you have a great website with kinds of inspiring ideas for, for nonprofits to use when it comes to social media. And when I've read some things that you've written, you've talked about the concept of content pillars for nonprofits. Can you explain a little bit more about what these pillars are and how they can help nonprofit organizations streamline those social media efforts? Absolutely. You know, one of my core goals in Nonprofit Marketing Nerd is to help make social media marketing easier for nonprofits, not more cumbersome, not more stressful, not all these. There's so many widgets and gadgets out there and that can be like scary for people. And so content pillars are literally buckets or concepts that all nonprofits should be talking about on their social media. It might be one or two different dependent on your mission, vision and goals. But in general, these are the core pieces of content all nonprofits should be sharing on their social media platform. Things like mission warrior content, advocacy that are better than trifled brochure content, but similar to that. Impact stories that show real faces and real people, direct asks, and maybe not just for donations, but direct asks for, if you're a faith-based organization, maybe direct asks for prayers. If you're a advocacy-related organization, maybe direct asks to reach out to a legislator, whatever the ask is, direct ask. Thank yous, which is the number one thing nonprofits forget or neglect on social media. Every nonprofit should be saying thank you to someone at least once a week on social media. This is really how you build community behind the scenes and campaigns, which we did talk about a little bit earlier. 
Now, how to do that and really still be authentic in that approach is hard. So we hear the term authenticity a lot. I think it's the word word of the year for 2024. Could you shed some light on how authenticity plays a role in nonprofit social media marketing today? And maybe some tips on finding that balance between being authentic, but yet oversharing. It's a fine balance. I'm going to take a step back. For people that are so worried about social media that they actually do nothing, one of the key recommendations I have is something called the Garbage Post Challenge. This is not created by me, but it's something that I'm actually currently doing and that I do recommend nonprofits that are trying to figure out where that line is to go ahead and do. And this is, it's going to scare you, Kara. (laughs) And you're probably like, no, Kelly, that's too much. But the Garbage Post Challenge is within 30 days, you're going to post 100 pieces of content, whether those are stories or pictures or posts or email blasts. 100 pieces of content in 30 days. And yes, that's a lot. But what it does is it helps you find that voice, find that authenticity, maybe give over, get over some of those perfectionism hurdles. A lot of times as humans, but especially when we are representing our organization, we might take that a little bit, I don't want to say too seriously, but it might be a very scary thing for us. So then we lean back and depend too much on Canva graphics and formal language. And that is nothing that's going to connect you to whoever your target audience is. So the garbage post challenge is really a way to get over that. You're not going to be able to create 100 perfect Canva graphics that are boring everyone. So you're going to be forced to just show up and do some lives. You're going to be forced to show stories of the warm and fuzzies behind the organization. I think that's a really good way to find your authentic voice if you're trying to figure out where the line. Another way nonprofits go wrong in terms of authenticity, you asked about what's oversharing. The way nonprofits typically go wrong is they undershare or they get too cold. So I, I'm almost like, well, Carol, I'm not going to give that question of oversharing a lot of weight because the biggest way nonprofits are not serving their organization right through their social media is they're not sharing at all or they're sharing in a very cold, disconnected way. And so a great way to figure out an authentic voice is just to go live, to go live more times than you think you should. If you're the executive director, and I don't know, care if you're like, oh, this sounds so scary. I don't want to do it. But it's- I'm terrified. I'm terrified, Kelly. <laughs> and that's why you should. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think lives are a good way to start to find that authentic voice. And at the end of the day, whoever your target audience is, they are grieving, understanding the heart and soul of your organization. because That's going to get them to act. And they're also craving like to know and trust you as an organization. So showing a real face, an authentic voice, maybe oversharing a little is probably the best way to go to truly connect with your target audience. Well, it's true. If you think about the people you connect with most in life, it's those who see all sides of you, right? So it's scary to be vulnerable. It's scary to be not perfect and a little unpolished. I, I may take this challenge on this quarter. Who knows? Okay, yay. I learned so much from you. I have applied a lot of the principles that you've shared. You have a great content planner that I've utilized. But if our listeners are interested in learning more about working with you, how can they get more information and maybe follow you around too? I'm Kelly, the nonprofit marketing nerd. I provide a lot of content tools and templates entirely for free on YouTube. So go there first. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn and Instagram, the nonprofit marketing nerd. Awesome. Well, Kelly, I have learned so much today. I'm a little more empowered than I was even 15 minutes ago, and I'm sure our listeners will be as well. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. It was a blast. And thank you to our listeners for choosing to spend your time today with the Nonprofit Podcast. I hope you've left with the confidence to take a small step today that will make a big difference tomorrow. Be sure to click the download button on your podcast player, then leave the Nonprofit Podcast a review or give it a thumbs up if you're listening to the Nonprofit Podcast on YouTube. Your review really is a great way to help others find us. You're here to help others. We're here to help you. So until next time, stay inspired. That warm feeling when you help someone It's not just happiness, it's fulfillment. And we believe it should be available to everyone. From frontline heroes to first-time fundraisers, our tools empower you to help others. This is our mission. This is DonorBox, helping you help others.